Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 22nd of July. India's opposition parties disrupt parliament for fifth day over inflation and GST hike. Dinesh Gunawardena sworn in as Sri Lankan PM amid army crackdown on protesters. Police opens fire on protesters in Pakistan administered Kashmir, several injured. And now for all the details. The first week of Indian Parliament's monsoon session saw ruckus and disruption as the opposition parties continued protests for the fifth day on Friday against inflation and recent hike in good and services tax on a number of essentials. Opposition leaders demanded the government to review the decision and hold a debate on the issue. Lawmakers of opposition parties, including the Congress on Friday, continued to hold protests for a fifth day in the parliament premises over inflation and the recent hike in GST, the goods and services tax, imposed on a number of essentials, terming it unreasonable and injustice. The opposition leaders said they want the government to immediately take up the issue of price rise in parliament's ongoing monsoon session and demanded the rollback of 5% GST on pre-packaged and labelled food items such as cereals, pulses and flour. We will not stop until the government is forced to listen to the voice of the people, the main opposition Congress party said on Twitter. And we demand immediate discussion should start on raising this GST immediately and withdraw, they should withdraw immediately and for that we will fight. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday held a meeting with top ministers to discuss the government strategy in the parliament amid the opposition stir. The fifth day of the monsoon session also witnessed ruckus and disruption in both the houses as opposition leaders demanded a debate on the price rise issue. India on Thursday said that it is keeping a constant watch on the developments near the line of actual control LAC with China and will take measures to deal with steps that may affect India's security. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bagchi was replying to a question on China setting up a village in Doklam Plateau on the Bhutanese side during his weekly presser in capital New Delhi. Bakhti said India looks forward to more dialogues at both military and diplomatic levels with China for the resolution of the relevant issues along the LAC in Western sector. Answering queries on the 16th round of India-China Corps Commander Level meeting held on July 17, the spokesperson referred to the joint statement and said the focus is for resolution of the remaining issues at the earliest. India and China have been engaged in a standoff since April-May 2020 over the transgressions by the Chinese army in multiple areas of Ladakh sector. The situation worsened after violent clashes with Chinese troops in Galwan Valley in June 2020. The talks have led to disengagement from some areas including the north and south banks of Pangong Tso and Galwan but some friction points remain. In news from Sri Lanka, senior lawmaker Dinesh Gunawardena was sworn in as the 15th Prime Minister of Sri Lanka on Friday, a day after Ranil Vikramasinghe took oath as the new president amid protests over the worst economic crisis. This came hours after a crackdown on a protest camp and took over the president's secretariat, which was earlier occupied by anti-government protesters. Senior Sri Lankan lawmaker Dinesh Gunawardena was sworn in on Friday as the 15th Prime Minister of the island nation, a day after Ranil Vikramasinghe took oath of office as the new president as the country grapples with its worst economic crisis in decades. Gunawardena took the oath of office in the presence of Vikramasinghe, seated in front of uniformed military officers in a room packed with lawmakers and officials. 
The ceremony came hours after the army raided the protest camp occupying grounds in front of president's office in Colombo, clearing out a section of it with at least nine arrests. Reports suggested the army had completely taken over the president's secretariat after the crackdown. Scores of members of unions of traders and teachers confronted armed security personnel and denounced the action. Protesters said they fear that President Vikram Singh has launched a crackdown a day after being sworn in. <laughs> Sri Lanka's crisis, the result of economic mismanagement, sparked months of mass protests and eventually forced former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa to flee the country earlier this month. Former PM Vikramay Singh was elected as president this week in a parliamentary vote by lawmakers, hoping he would pull the country out of the crippling crisis. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan government's coalition ally Jamiat e Ulemae Islam Fazl Chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman has raised questions over the delay in verdict in the foreign funding case against opposition PTI party led by ousted Premier Imran Khan. Rahman said he has already asked the government to put Imran Khan in jail over financial irregularities in his party's funds. Pakistan government's coalition ally JUIF, Jamiat Ulema Islam Fazl Chief Mulana Fazlur Rahman on Thursday raised questions over the delay in the announcement of the verdict in opposition PTI's foreign funding case, which was reserved by the Election Commission on June 21. The foreign funding case was filed by former PTI leader Akbar S. Babar in 2014, alleging serious financial irregularities in ousted Premier Imran Khan's PTI party's funding from Pakistan and abroad. Talking to reporters in Bannu Rahman said, he has already asked the government to put PTI chairman Imran Khan in jail and cautioned why the decision in the case is being delayed. Election commission ne election karaye 20 seat upar zimni aapne kaha zabardast zabardast mashallah nataj par khushi aur agle din jab khabar aayi ke foreign funding case ka faisla aane wala hai election commission mustafi ho jaye. Earlier this week, Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif also urged the poll body to take action against PTI chairman in the case, saying that for long Imran Khan has been given a free pass despite his repeated and shameless attacks on state institutions. This comes as opposition PTI recently recorded a thumping win in the politically crucial Punjab province, defeating Sharif's ruling PMLN party. The PTI chief has now demanded early general elections. Moving on, scores of protesters sustained injuries in Poonch area of Pakistan-administered Kashmir after security forces fired indiscriminately at them on Thursday. The incident took place as ongoing protests over high inflation and denial of basic human rights had gained momentum. The police resorted to firing upon agitators who had blocked the main highway, wounding several of them. At least 65 locals were also arrested and 30 of them booked under terror law, reports suggest. Activists have long raised concern that people in Pakistan-administered Kashmir are denied basic rights and they have been facing numerous challenges like high inflation, poor education and health facilities and lack of other resources. Whenever they raise their voice for their fundamental rights, the security agencies use brutal force to muzzle dissent. Rejecting the UN report on the situation of human rights in Afghanistan, Islamic Emirates Minister of Vice and Virtue accused the US and the international community of interfering in the affairs of Afghanistan. The report released this week said that the ruling Taliban were responsible for extrajudicial killings, torture, arbitrary arrests and inhumane punishments in the 10 months since they seized power. The United Nations mission in Afghanistan, UNAMA, in a report released this week said that the ruling Taliban were responsible for extrajudicial killings, torture, arbitrary arrests 
and inhumane punishments in the 10 months since they seized power. UNAMA particularly mentioned the role of two bodies in violations, the Ministry of Propagation of Virtue and Prevention of Vice, as well as General Directorate of Intelligence. Mohammad Khalid Hanafi, the Acting Minister of Vice and Virtue, rejected the report accusing the United States and the international community of interfering in the affairs of Afghanistan. Speaking at a gathering in southeastern Paktia province on Thursday, Hanafi said the international community is pressing them under the pretext of human rights. Bilal Karimi, deputy spokesman for the Islamic Emirate, also rejected the report, saying after the Islamic Emirate swept into power, the humanitarian situation has improved in every aspect in Afghanistan and the killing of people has been stopped. The report said the hardest hit victims were those associated with the former government and its security forces. Human rights violations also affected journalists and media workers. UNAMA also stressed the erosion of women's rights. UNAMA recorded 2,106 civilian casualties, 700 killed, 1,406 wounded since the Taliban took over. In an effort to reduce the consumption of petroleum products as well as provide quick services in the metropolis, the quick response team from Nepal's Lalitpur Metropolitan City Police have been provided with five electrical scooters, becoming the first local body to do so. The Lalitpur Metropolitan City Police in Nepal has become the first local body to use electric scooters for patrolling in an effort to provide quick services to the metropolis, as well as reduce the consumption of petroleum products. A total of five electric scooters were handed over to the police. These scooters have the capacity to run up to 80 kilometers once charged for three hours. The scooters were made operational after they were launched with the formation of Quick Response Team. During a ceremony held at the office of the Metropolis this week, Chiri Babu Maharjan, the re-elected mayor of Lalitpur city, announced that his office would from now on only buy electric vehicles. He also said that the newly set aim would help Nepal in achieving sustainable development goals. <laughs> With electric scooters entering the operation, the Lalitpur Metropolitan City Police are hopeful that it would cut the daily expenses of petroleum products. Nepal, a country of 29 million people landlocked between China and India, in recent months witnessed series of protests over rising inflation and hike in fuel prices. The government significantly lowered fuel prices in response to mounting public outrage over rising prices for products and services last month. Devotees across India gathered at Sikh places of worship on Friday to mark the birth anniversary of Guru Har Krishan, the eighth spiritual leader of the Sikhs. Guru Har Krishan is known for selflessly serving thousands of people suffering from smallpox epidemic in Delhi in the year 1664. He himself succumbed to the disease at the age of eight. Hundreds of devotees gathered at the famous Sikh shrine Golden Temple in India's northern Amritsar city to offer prayers on the occasion of birth anniversary of the 8th spiritual leader Guru Har Krishan on Friday. The devotees took a holy dip in the sacred pond at the shrine and remembered the life and teachings of Guru Har Krishan who was born in the year 1656 and was anointed the leader of the Sikh faith at the tender age of five succeeding his father Guru Har Rai. Despite his young age, he portrayed deep knowledge of Sikh ideology and had a penchant for eliminating the lives of devotees and dispelling sorrow and suffering. Similar scenes were witnessed at Sikh places of worship in the capital New Delhi including at the Gurudwara Bangla Sahib, which marks the site where Guru Har Krishan selflessly served and comforted thousands of people suffering from smallpox epidemic in the year 1664. Soon he himself succumbed to the disease and died at the age of eight. Six in India form about 2% of nearly 1.3 billion population and are largely concentrated in northern Punjab state and in New Delhi. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.